Hello. I just got back from from dropping off a piece of art for a local competition. I didn't have a whole lot of work to choose from because I've been doing a lot of things in my sketchbook, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I, I want to start doing some things on canvas. And as much as I, I enjoy the convenience of, of acrylic paint, I think I'm gonna go back and start using oil paint. And I noticed on a survey that I did on what you all wanted to see, it was, oil painting was one of the top ones. So I've gotten out my paints here. It's, I use a different brands. So even though I just said that I wanna start doing some things on canvas, I just sewed a couple of pages in my sketchbook so that we could do some color work and just sort of play with things and get used to using them again. Yesterday, I decided to clean off my favorite oil painting palette. And yes, this is clean. But this is a, this is a parallel palette. And I love this thing. What I've got here is I've got a selection of paints put on my palette. This is a poppy seed oil. Some people might use linseed oil. It's, I'm just using it as my medium. I don't use a lot of mediums, but if I do, it's either poppy seed or just standard linseed. This extends the drying time. It makes it stay wet longer. And then the colors I've got out here, I've got just Windsor & Newton titanium white, a yellow ochre. This is a Holbein. I've got a wide variety of, of paint brands. Gamblin 1980. Oh, sorry. That was um, cadmium yellow light. So I've got a warm and a cool yellow. Then I've got cadmium red hue and alizarin crimson. And then I decided to put just a dab of quinacridone uh, red so that uh, I can play with the mixing and show you a few things. Then this is a Grumbacher Dioxazine purple, which is a really, really deep purple. Dark, dark purple. Uh, Williamsburg Ultramarine, which you can see I've used that a lot. Uh, just a touch of Thalo Blue. Got a touch of Thalo Green. Viridian, uh, Holbein, Grumbacher, Sap Green, and I had something else. What did, oh, oh no, these two might tend or might wind up being awful close to each other. I couldn't decide which one to use, so I put both just to play with. Then this is a Burnt Umber of Holbein. Um, well, I've got this like this too. If you get one of these, these are worth their weight in gold. If you see this tube, it's got it's got a lot of paint still left in there, but it's going to be a pain to get that out. I I mean, but if I do this, it pushes all that paint up to the top, and I I stop short of getting out all these wrinkles because when I take the lip, the top off, I don't want it to explode on me and this is this is a i think this is called just a crimper a tube crimper but and these aren't very expensive they're like five to eight dollars maybe and like i said they're worth their weight in gold because i mean one tube of this you know if i had wound up having to toss out that part because i couldn't get it out or it dried up <clears throat> this is going to pay for itself. So, so that's a handy uh, brush. I've just got a number three round. I think this is a rosemary, just from the, the color of the handle. Then I've got a container here that has a lid that seals on of just some mineral spirits. 
And these containers are really handy because this inside comes out and all the paint uh, sets, settles down in the bottom. But this, you can seal. And I mean, it's, it's sealed. So you can take this with you if you go out. And also this will hang from your easel if you want to. So anyway, those are the main things I've got. Let me move this over so you can see it. I'm going to take a little bit of white. I'm not going to mix up a whole lot of paint. I just want to... I want to see some of these values. This yellow, probably, I, I, well, I didn't really need to do the yellow, but, because all these right here are really dark, and so I'm just going to do each one just a little bit, so you can see the tint of it. The, and I'm just wiping off the palette knife. Well, let me go ahead and use this that I've. This is the uh, cadmium red hue, and you'll notice I put just a dot on there. And it's coming up this nice. Cool, kind of peachy color. You can see that. You can barely see it, I think, on camera. And then this. It's alizarin crimson. Let me just take that and. Yeah. You can see the comparison. This almost has like a bluish hue to it. This is my quinacridone. And it takes just a little bit. It's sort of like a phthalo as far as like intensity of hue. But you can mix a lot of things with this that you can't get with just regular old red. You can see the difference there, those three reds. Then we've got this. This is dioxazine purple. And I just a dot there, you can see. There's a nice, nice purple. Oops. And then this is my Theo blue. No, this is my terrain blue. This is my thea blue. It's separated a little in the tube. A little of this goes a long way. You can see that's much warmer. This is my phthalo green, and I put it in there not knowing for sure if this was what I wanted. It gives a nice teal, nice light teal color. Just, you have to be careful with the the amount that you use, though, 
of any phthalo because it will just take over the whole canvas. And this is Viridian. It's just kind of a cool blue, or cool green, I'm sorry. sap green. You can see it's got more yellow to it. That's a nice green. If I were doing a landscape, these two probably would be enough. The viridian and the sap, or the phthalo and the sap. Those two are awful close. Let's see there. Close. But this will give you, just with either one of those, will give you a good variety. And then uh, we've got to have a brownish. You can make this. You can make a good brown. That's a nice neutral. And then this black. A lot of people don't use black on your... But if you're doing landscapes or... You can use this as a, see how that's kind of a cool, cool gray. If you add just a smidge, it can give you a nice sort of olive green if you add some of that yellow to it. There. And that's with the black, the ivory black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these and I'm just going to that was my yellow. There's my yellow ochre. Don't put a lot of paint on your brush. You don't have to clean it quite so much. So my doxine, doxine, purple. My ultramarine, oh, that's nice. This is my phthalo, I believe. Yep. And this is my Viridian. And what I did on this paper too, this is just a sketchbook. I gessoed this so that it would take the oil paint a little better. Kind of look like Easter colors, don't they? really see that <clears throat> nice green kind of army green that you can get with that ivory black mm, what I'm going to do is take the full
go ahead and put that black down there too so you can see it. So these are the full colors straight out of the tube. And then I've created a tint by adding some white into it. Let me scoop this to the side now that we've got a visual of the, of the colors there. So we've all been taught yellow, red. And blue are going to give us all the colors that we need. But if you mix alizarin crimson, let's move this over here. If you mix alizarin crimson and some ultramarine blue, that's what it'll look like straight out of the tube. So get, let me give you some. That white there, so you can see what it's not a very vibrant purple. In fact, that probably has too much red. But it gives you sort of a dirty purple. It's not a vibrant. But muddy purple. If you use that quinacridone, this and then add a little blue to it. It's going to give you a much more vibrant. A lot more vibrant purple. Just take that over there. See. Purple and just a touch of red. Use ultramarine and a little bit of that purple. Then if we use a little ultramar ultramarine blue, Some of this yellow, then I wind up with a green. It's kind of a dirty green. Let me, let me add a little. Although this looks messy, go with it.
And you see just this subtle shift there between the red and the blue. Then if we add more blue and yellow, we're going to wind up with a darker green. Kind of bluish green. And the tinting strength of that blue is a lot stronger than the yellow. So I'm going to add a lot of yellow here. Take the yellow and add just a touch, I mean just a touch of blue. It's going to give us a yellow green. See how easy it is just to use some of these and together. And if we put equal parts of lizard and crimson in red, which has a much Stronger tinting strength than the yellow, but see how it's kind of a dirty yellow. It's not a pretty yellow or a pretty orange. If we put a bit of this in there, and this is that quinacridone, it brightens it up. Some of that, a little bit of that, and some of that. I'm gonna add a little yellowish to that. Add some yellow there, and just smoosh that over. You see, you get a yellow orange. And then let's start putting some of this white on here. And it gives you the tint. You see you've got the full spectrum here. And we'll just ignore this splotch over here. So with this cad yellow light, alizarin crimson, quinacridone, and ultramarine blue, where's my dioxazine purple? Oh, it's right there in front of me. And some white. With these six tubes of paint, we should be able to create this, which would be considered a limited palette. If you take some of this black, let's add some white to it, so you get this cool gray again, but if you add some of that yellow ochre, get a nice a dirty brown that works really well in landscapes. Or if you use the ultramarine and the yellow ochre, 
It gives you something else. So you see all these pastels that we mixed earlier. If you want to get something for a Caucasian skin tone or a lighter skin tone, if you take a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of a lizard and crimson, and then just barely a touch of blue. It gives you sort of a fleshy color. So those, that's just the basics of mixing color with your oil paints. Another tip, if you have paint left, I could just I could just scrape all this off, since especially since it's a glass palette with this scraper and just be done with it, which I will probably there. But some of this, like this, I'm gonna take one of these little condiment containers it on there. You could even mix them ahead on your palette and have them ready to go before you start painting, which is what I like to do. And if you want to make a brown, if you take some alizarin crimson, that's a lot. Add some black to it. get a brownish. Alter that a little bit back and forth. Add a little bit of yellow ochre. And you can see you can mix your own browns. I like to mix the ultramarine blue some yellow ochre straight. And you add a little bit of white to that so you can see the hue, you see the shade. There we go. That'll work nice in some of the skies. And some of your clouds so the the sky's not you know a blinding blue it tones down the blue if you want to mix the red and just a little bit of green it'll tone down the red so like there's some red red put just a little bit of white in that so you can see it better then add just a touch and it'll gray it down because it's its complement. The complement is when you add the yellow and the purple together or like we just did with the red and the green. Okay, so I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and clean up my palette here and say farewell. Hi-oh. Do that painting stuff.